Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, here's an interesting story connected with Horlicks. Some time ago, I met an old friend of mine. We got to talking about this and that, and he told me, among other things, that he was worried about his wife. She was constantly trying to reduce, and her health had been greatly impaired. Well, here's what I did. I told him to have his wife listen to Lum and Abner on a certain night the following week. The night I was going to tell our listeners about the Horlick weight control plan. How a glass full of Horlicks in place of a regular noonday lunch would greatly help in reducing weight. How in a recent test, 25 women using the plan averaged a weight reduction of nearly four pounds in only three weeks. Well, she did listen in that night, decided to try the plan for herself, and the last I heard, it seemed that my old friend's worries were over at last. His wife had found the ideal weight control plan. Incidentally, she never missed hearing Lum and Abner after that. If you're at all overweight, try the Horlicks weight control plan yourself. Just drink a good glass full of delicious Horlicks every noontime in place of your regular lunch. The more rigidly you follow the plan, the better will be the results. And remember, your health will benefit, too. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yesterday, Squire Skimp put up $2,000 with which Snake Hogan bought Abner's Jotham Down store. If the scheme had worked as Squire had planned... Abner would have turned right around and invested the money in the Squire's silver mine. And Squire would have had his money back and the store, too. But after the deal was closed, Abner failed to fall in with the second part of Squire's scheme and refused to buy any stock in the mine at all. <laughs> the result is that Abner has sold his store for a handsome price and Squire has been trying in vain to get his $2,000 back. As we look in on Pine Ridge today... We find Lum down at Dick Huddleston's store discussing the matter. Listen. Yes, sir. It sold it for $2,000 cash. Well, where did Snake Hogan get the $2,000 to buy it with? He was on her leaf all last winter. Well, Abner says he told him some of his relations left it to him. Well, I'll declare. <laughs> By Jack, that's a good price for that store. That stock of grocers over there won't invoice over $1,200. I know it. I told Abner that's the best deal ever I heard of him making. Sure. I was over at his house all morning trying to get him to invest it in our silver mine, but I couldn't get him to do it. Well, now, don't you be trying to get Abner to soak all that money in that mining stock loan. Why, it'll make him rich, Dick. Two thousand dollars worth of that stock ain't no telling how much it will be worth. Squire says it'll pay back a hundred and sixty dollars for every dollar a body puts in it. Yeah, that's what Squire says. Well, Dick, you know how much silver mines is worth. That's one thing folks has got to have is silver. You can always sell that stuff. Well, now, you don't know for sure, though, Lum, if there's any silver out there in that mine. Oh, they still were there, all right. Squire's got a big hunk of it he dug out of there himself and brung back with him. Well, now, I wouldn't insist on having her put his money in it, though, if he doesn't want to. Well, his own wife, Elizabeth, knows it's a good proposition. I believe she's got a better business head on her than he has. She's trying to get him to invest in it, too, but he won't do it. Stubbornest one man i ever seen in my life. There was a big crowd of us over there. Argued with him right now all morning. Professor Willoughby and his wife and Squire and Elizabeth and myself all arguing with him. He just sat there and shook his head. Well, good for him. Well, I'm going to lose some friends, though, I'm telling you, Dave. Squire's awful mad at him. Well, he's mad at me, too, for that good. Mad at you? Yeah, for some reason or other, he thinks I ought to just make Abner buy it. I told him a while ago I can just force him into buying it. Why, no, of course not. I never seen Squire so worked up over anything in my life. That's all he can talk about. Looks like he just got his head set, just bound and determined that Dabner's going to buy that stock, whether he wants to or not. Snake Hogan's is pretty mad about it, too, I think. Snake Hogan? What he's got to do with it? I don't know, but he called up while I was over and told Abner if he didn't buy stock in the mine, if that money was going to make him trade back. Well, I don't see how I could do that. If Abner's got the money, while well, the deal's all closed. Yeah, I don't think he can make him. Well, I know. Snake would just sort of bluff him there. Wait. Yonder comes Abner now. <laughs> I think he's sure tickled over the deal he made. <laughs> well, he ought to be selling his store for about twice what it's worth. <laughs> I wish I was still a half-partner in that store. 
I'd take my half of that $2,000 and make myself dependent for the rest of my life. And by Jack, you fellas are certain to have been changing ownership of that store for the last six months. That's where I never know who my competitor is anymore. <laughs> he has been changing about right smartly. <laughs> yeah, watch Abner strutting up there, coming up there in the front yeah, door. He's proud of himself, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, come in, Abner, come in. Yeah. Uh, howdy, boys, howdy. Oh, are you looking for me, Abner? No, I just thought I'd drop down low for a while. I thought maybe you'd change your mind about buying that stock. No, I ain't changed my mind. I ain't going to. I wouldn't buy it now at all after Squire threatened me if I never bought it. That's a good deal you made, Abner. Lama just tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a pretty smooth trader, ain't I? <laughs> well, that's just about twice what the store is worth. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> But Snake made me that offer, so I took it. You know, I, that's a funny fella, that Snake Hogan, you know him? Funny? Yeah, him and Squire come down there yesterday and made me that proposition, and I taken him up on it, and now then he want me to trade back. He said if I don't invest the $2,000 he'd give me in that silver mine, that I've got to trade back with him. Well, what business is it to his what you do with the money? And that's what I told him a while ago. Well, I think he's just doing that on account of he's a friend of Squire's. See, Elizabeth told Squire if he'd find somebody to buy the store off of Abner there, why, she'd see personal that you bought stock in the silver mine with the money. I know it. I told her to keep her nose out of my business from here on. That's the reason I come down here to Lowe's. Me and her ain't getting along any too good. Well, now, she was doing that for your own good, Abner. Yeah, I know. She's trying to help. I reckon I sort of flew off in the handle. Well, I still can't understand why Snake Hogan's interested in you buying that stock in the silver mine. He doesn't even own any stock in it, does he? No, no, not a nickel's worth. Well, I never seen a fella so mad over anything in my life as he is. Got me sort of scared about it, all the threats he's been making. Oh, I don't think he'd do anything. Well, I don't know now, Lum. I've known Snake a long time, and there ain't nothing too low down on for him to do. Yeah, that's right. I was just wondering. This whole thing looks funny to me. Was Squire there when you made the deal with Snake, had not he? Yeah, yeah, he's the one that talked to him into buying the store from me. Mm-hmm. Don't suppose that Squire put that money up for Snake to buy it with, do you? No, no, Snake fell heirs to it or something. I was just thinking that maybe Squire would given Snake the money, thinking that you'd uh, turn right around and invest it in the silver mine. That way he'd get his money back and have a store, too. No, Nick, no, no. He, he'd have to give Admiral $2,000 worth of stock in the silver mine. He wouldn't be nothing ahead that way. Yeah, if the stock's worth anything. Oh, well, it's worth $160 for every dollar yeah, I body. I know, I know. I guess I'm wrong. Just trying to figure out why Snake is anxious to see Edna put that money in the mine. <laughs> I guess you forgot about Squire. I'd have to give him stock, huh? Well, I don't know why he done it, but I've got the money now, and I aim to keep it. Till I clean it. What are you going to do now, Edna? Are you going into some other kind of business? No, sir, I ain't going to do nothing. Folks around here have been accusing me of being backwards. They thought I wouldn't take no part in any society doing. I dog get some hair out, I'm going right into it. Well, good for you, Abner. I guess Elizabeth and Paul has been a little ashamed of me because I wouldn't try to improve myself. Folks are beginning to look down on me. I dog get some hair out, I'm going to set them a pace around here. It'll be hard for them to follow. They don't know nothing about society yet. Wait till I get started. I'm going to get me a book on society and study up on it right good before I get done this town won't hold me. Hi, uh, Granny, that's the way I love to hear you talk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to be right honest with you, I've been sort of ashamed of you myself, wearing them overhauls around. Yeah. Got to where we never had nothing in common no more. You never played contract bridge and you stopped taking them boy sleds. Well, I'll make up for lost time now. I won't have that store to worry about. Yeah, you're a gentleman now. Gentlemen of leisure. Well, that's good, huh, being leaders? Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> in society, the leisure you are, the higher up you get. Hey, look driving up there in front, Edna. Huh? Well, there's Squire and Snake Hogan. Oh, my goodness. Now the argument starts all over again about me buying stock in that silver mine. Trading back with the Snake and getting him his money back. Well, now, you just stand pat, Edna. Just refuse to do either one. Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't get in no argument with Snake if I was you, Abner. There ain't nothing he won't do to have his way. You said that yourself. Well, now, uh, he ain't scaring me none with his threat. I don't think. Well, come in, gentlemen. Come in. Uh, hi, Dick. I was just looking for Peabody. Uh, yes, we want to see you a few minutes, Abner. Well, take a good look at me. Here I am. Well, uh, we want to talk a little business with you private. Uh, yes, uh, could you step out in front here a few minutes, Abner? It won't take long. 
Well, can't you talk to a man here? Are you going to come out here, Peabody, or are we going to have to drag you out? Cut now, Snake. Just a minute now. Don't get rambunctious. Uh, Abner, we'd rather talk to you privately if you don't mind. Well, all right. I don't mind to talk with you. I'll tell you right now, I ain't going to buy no stock, and I ain't going to give you money back. Well, there may be ways to make you change your mind about that, Peabody. I'll be back in a minute, fellas. Yeah, all right, Abner. Oh, hmm. That snake Hogan acts like he's pretty mad, didn't he? Yeah. Hope Abner don't get in any trouble with him. Wait a minute. Look here. Huh? What are they trying to do there? Well, it looks like they're trying to shove Abner in that car. Uh, Granny, that's what they're doing. Yeah, snake holding him on the back seat there. Hey, wait a minute, you fella. Yeah, hold on, What are you trying to do there? Come back here. Come on, Dick. We better follow him. Granny, there ain't no telling what they are. Well, maybe those were not idle threats that Snake Hogan was making after all. And now, all vacationists, attention. We're going to hear from Mr. Warren W. Lundgren. Don't miss hearing what he has to say. Seven of us, three from Racine, Wisconsin, and four from Burlington, Iowa, recently made a two weeks fishing and canoe trip to Quetico Reserve, Ontario Province, Canada. During the vacation, we canoed over 120 miles and trudged heavily laden with canoes and pack sacks over about 50 miles of portages through the woods. Because we were constantly on the move, we were often forced to omit a noonday meal. At other times, making a late camp, we found little time to prepare complete suppers at night. It was at times like these that we were mighty thankful for the Horlicks tablets four of us had brought along. We surely made liberal use of these on portages and when meals were omitted. We wish to pay a high tribute to your product, as it certainly sustained us and lessened our feeling of fatigue. Well, Mr. Lundgren, we certainly want to thank you for telling us this. Vacationists, did you all hear what Mr. Lundgren said? I know that you too will find a score of uses for Horlicks tablets on your holiday trip, whether motoring, golfing, or fishing. Don't forget to take a flask along. Your druggist has them, you know, in both natural and chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.